You know, we've gone from being data driven, which I love, to being data dependent. So you're right. And Every little terrified. <laughs> maybe data, <laughs> data obsessed. <laughs> we can go on. <laughs> but the overall big picture of the U.S. jobs market is that it's solid. It's solid. Uh, but it is softening. It's cooling. That was a big statement that we're going to see a cool down. Yeah. But it's yeah. probably you're with me on that one. Aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> it's probably because we saw in the private sector data that ADP looks at very carefully. We pay about 20% of the U.S. workforce, a steep decline in September. Now, people assume that things work in a straight line, but we can often see a weak month sandwiched between two strong months. Yeah. We see it all the time in all kinds of different data. So we need a couple of months to really establish a trend. The key here is overall solid, but that doesn't mean uh, that we'll get a sub 100,000 number uh, later t this morning. It's it a could couple be the two. case. You, you, you speak about wanting a, a a few more weaker numbers to kind of give that clear sense. Is a couple, two, three? I mean, how many would be would be a fair, fair, fair requisite on that one? I mean, for economists who tend to be slow moving, three months yeah. is ideal. But the markets move a lot faster. Yeah. Markets often move before the data is released in the, to begin with. Uh, but overall, if you look at other things other than just the monthly report, you see that participation rate is back up for prime age workers. That's a big deal. More people are going into the labor market. That means that certain tensions are easing, and you can see that in average pay, it's starting to slow. So people who are worried about inflation and wages really propping up inflation, there's no evidence. I don't think you'll see it in this report or in the ADP payroll report of wages accelerating. In fact, they've been steadily declining all year. And that's a big deal for the Fed, too. It's not just the jobs number. It's how much companies are paying to get workers in the door. That has definitely taken a step back. Yeah, we've been speaking about it the whole year, for, well, for more than a year, actually, in fact, and that's a recession, right? That dreaded R word. But I want to know if you're perhaps on a recession warning or if you're perhaps on recession watch. And, and I feel like perhaps a little bit <laughs> like a slightly different, right? <laughs> slightly different uh, in the sense then. Where would you be? I mean, a warning feels like that's more imminent than just perhaps a watch, which we pretty much have been for over a year. You know, recession, saying that there's going to be a recession is like saying it's going to rain without giving a date or a time. Yeah. So, yeah, eventually, recession is always a risk, but whether the risk is imminent or not, that is harder to call. Yeah. If you look at the jobs market with under 4% unemployment in the United States, that's very close to historical lows. It's hard to call a recession just by looking at the jobs picture right now. Um, I had a question for you, but you've now got me to change it with your last answer. Um, <laughs> Saying there's a recession is like saying it's going to rain. Unless you're one of these mad governments somewhere in the world who tries to not let it rain because they've got a special mm. parade or they've got the Olympics or something as well. I'm not naming any number of governments. It's a lot of control. I'll get ourselves into an international incident. It's the end of the week. I just want to get home. But, 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 but there are too many times central banks uh, added to the actions of governments have tried to negate the risk mm. of having a recession because they're terrified of the consequences. Well. And, and it's been the big change in central bank policy, I think, over the last 20 years is that we, we, you know, we, don't, we don't want a recession in the equation for all kinds of reasons. I think that's bad. I think the recessions can sometimes actually be rejuvenating for economies as well. So, so I hear what you're saying about recessions potentially um, are like it's going to rain. But in the same way that those, dare I say, cloud-busting governments around the world are there, have, have the central bankers overstepped the mark trying to negate the downside risk to economies? Well, that is the past 10 years of yeah. U.S. economic growth, of rock-bottom interest and, rates. And, and Draghi and others as well. Right. So this was an economy built on very close to zero interest rates for 10 years of economic expansion. And that was okay because inflation was super low. But now infl inflation has awakened. And if you look at demographic trends, labor shortages are not going away. It's getting better, but there's still that's a structural change in the labor market because of the aging of the U.S. population. So what that means is inflation is always going to be a risk. It's going to prop up. And so going back to zero or near rock bottom interest rates is going to be difficult uh, to support the economy. This is an economy that the training wheels have come off in the U.S. And now people have to ride on a regular bike, uh, businesses and consumers. And, they don't and, like it. and well, it's new. It's new. Because well, it's not new for someone my age. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're going back to a more normal historical yeah, period. I, I, and, and that's terrifying for people who have lived with zero interest rates. I want to move on because um, you at ADP, because you look at jobs, 
have always lived with this moniker, this, oh, well, it's a lagging indicator. Oh, it's a lagging indicator. You know, your PMIs, ISMs, they're forward-looking indicators. Jobs is a lagging indicator. But out to the lagging indicator, the concern that interest rate moves have cumulative and lagged effects. Again, the word comes back in a different form as well. How concerned are you that actually the jobs picture is just not showing you what's going to happen next again and, you, and I'm sure you hate this question or love it in the same way as well because you've probably got a very robust answer for that. Well first of all ADP data is weekly so we don't think of it as lagging in the traditional yeah. sense it's actually pretty high frequency and we can get a real-time measure of it. I think it's there's a feedback loop that is underappreciated. Uh, people say the labor market or the jobs picture is lagging but the jobs picture is actually feeding current uh, Federal Reserve policy. So it's not going in just one direction. There's a feedback loop in between, and these effects can amplify. So a simple relationship no longer exists. We are in a complex period of the global economy, not just the U.S., and the actions taken by the Fed affect the labor market, but vice versa. Uh, and so we can't just say, oh, this is lagging, you know, six to nine months of Fed yeah. policy is going to show up in the labor market. Um, the labor market is driving Fed policy now. Hi, I'm Giovanna Bersetti, and thank you for watching. You can check out more of our videos by clicking on the boxes on the screen. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more from CNBC International. Thank you for watching.